being with us all week, Virgin Media Ireland have been teaming up with the Alzheimer's Society of Ireland as part of their Donate for Dementia campaign. And tonight, the week will conclude with the highly anticipated broadcast of Finding Jack Charlton. The documentary will detail the highs and lows of the former Ireland manager's career as well as his life with dementia during his later years. And we're honoured to be joined by Jack's granddaughter this morning, Kate. But first, let's take a little look at what we can expect to see tonight. His personality connected with Ireland because of his roots in the northeast of England. Working class people who worked hard for a living. He's actually quite a humorous and very lovable guy. Chips while I'm waiting. This is Dunstan Borough Castle, built in 1313 by the 2nd Earl of Lancaster. After the Battle of Horribridge, he was advised to retreat here. But he decided to go That's me. Yes. Yeah. His captain would be headed near Pontefract. He probably preferred that to freezing the death of here, because this is one of the draftiest hills I've ever been in. That's me. <laughs> I don't even know me doing it. Wow. Amazing. And Jack's granddaughter, Kate Wilkinson, joins us now to chat about his life, legacy and more. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, Kate. I mean, Thank you for having me. This whole country holds Jack so close in our hearts. But for you, he was more than a, a football manager. To us, he was more than a football manager. But he was your granddad. So what has it been like for you and your family being part of that documentary and, and seeing it? Yeah, it's been quite amazing, actually. Um, I saw the documentary uh, towards the end of last year. Um, and I just, yeah, I thought they did it so well. You know, it's so perfectly captured him, you know, and, and, and I know for, for football fans, lots of the, the footage that they got from throughout the years was, was really amazing. But also the footage of him just at home, um, you know, with, with my grandma. And, and, you know, it was quite amazing to see. It's incredible how the, the, the show was put together, the movie was put together. We were talking to Andy Townsend during the week, obviously, who was involved in this case. When you guys were approached about it, what, what did your family think? Did you think, yeah, this is a good idea, you know, or, you know, did you think, no, this is actually private? Or did you feel a need that maybe this story that, uh, you know, dealing with dementia and you guys as a family dealing with it needed to be told and shared? Yeah, I mean, I must admit, I think, when I first heard about the documentary, and it was actually my uncle um, who was initially approached and who managed mm. the process. Um, but I think when I first heard about it, I mean, you know, there's been DVDs and things done before of his, of his life and, you know, his, like, his love of fishing and that kind of thing. Um, so I don't think it was until I saw the trailer that I kind of realised quite how, quite how well it had all come together, you know, and quite how amazing it was, it was going to be. Um, and, you know, I mean, I think... You know, the dementia and the topics that are touched on, you know, it, it, they are very sensitive topics, but also I thought they, they did it really well, mm. um, you know, and it was, you know, they handled what is a very difficult topic very sensitively. And, yeah, so I thought it, they, they put it together really nicely. And you mentioned your grandmother there, and she really shines in the documentary um, because it's not just a person with the dementia, of course, the whole family are affected and, you know, she was such a, an incredible support to him. Yeah, actually, one of my favourite things about the documentary was probably actually how they portrayed my grandma. I mean, you know, you saw it in lots of the early clips at games and, mm. you know, at, at home with him and that kind of thing. But I think, yeah, you realise, you know, she was with him his sort of entire life, you know, and, and right mm. until the end and, and being a carer is... You know, it's it's tough. You know, it can be hard work, and she was there every day, day in, day out. And I thought, you know, they really portrayed her role well. Um, and you know, I mean, other parts of it, I had to laugh at when she was, you know, there was a comment in the, the comment that she made in the documentary, and when when they first met, and you know, he he went up to her in a dance hall and said, oh, you know, oh, I'm Jack Charlton, I'm a footballer, and she said, oh, I'm Doris Day, I'm a film actress, <laughs> you know, and she. You kind of got that, that personality all the way through. Um, 
So yeah, no, I thought they portrayed her really well. Yeah, they were clearly they were clearly a great match. Um, like a lot of people in the country, Kate, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, your granddad. He came to see a show that I was doing in the UK, and you know, the man had the patience of the saint because, of course, every man, woman, and child involved with the show wanted to get their photograph taken with Jack because it was like you know it was like meeting. One of the Beatles. He was a, he was our hero. He was our he was our youth. He brought us through so many of our formative years, um, and he had the patience of a saint. He was very very accommodating, uh, a polite a, a gentleman is how I described him. Um, we we get a little glimpse into that tonight uh, because we all know him as Claire said as Jack the footballer, Jack the football manager. What was he like as a granddad? Yeah. It's interesting, actually, because because watching, you know, and, and you know, since he he died just last July, you know, I've had lots of people have, have told us stories about you know times that they met him and or times that you know he was passing them in the supermarket or or wherever, and and actually, the stories that they have are actually very similar to the stories I have. You know, he always gave lots of time. He was always you know caring. He was funny and jokey and you know and and that experience that I think lots of people yeah there he is blowing up my birthday candles <laughs> um you know and I, but I think that experience that you that everybody else had with him I really shared with him um you know so I think that was that was really nice actually um to see and you know I think one of the big things I learned from the film which I just I don't think I ever realized was you know I knew how much granddad loved Ireland you know i He's got his honor Irish citizenship um, framed just by, like, right in the front door of his house. And, you know, there's pictures of Ireland everywhere and memorabilia from Ireland. So, you know, I think I always knew how much he loved Ireland. But I think what I really got from the documentary was how much Ireland, you know, the Irish people loved him. You know, we had so many, so many really lovely comments from people in Ireland and, and stories that they had and, you know, letters. And, and, you know, I saw murals painted and, you know, the Irish... Parliament did a speech, you know, there was so much, you know, there's such an outpouring of love from Ireland after mm. after he died. And I think, you know, that really hit home for me that, you know, it really was a kind of two-way, a two-way relationship. Yeah, well, he brought us so much magic and he'll never be forgotten here. What about the dementia then, Kate? Because it can rob of, of so much, but did your granddad manage to keep his essence, his spirit to the end? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, um, like I'm sure other people with family members who have this dementia have found that, you know, it got worse, definitely, um, over time. You know, it started as being, you know, he would just be forgetful, but you could see that he was forgetting things and he would get frustrated with it. And then, you know, as time went on, it, it got kind of progressively worse. Um, but, you know, somebody said to me... Uh, Afterwards, oh, you know, I'd, I feel like the documentary is going to be really sad, and I'm not sure I want to watch it. You know, and actually, and I, and I said, you know, afterwards, but I think what the documentary gets across is it, he was always still there. Mm. You know, right until the end. I mean, I remember just, you know, I saw him, you know, just before he died. And I mean, even then, he was, you know, he would pull faces at me across the dinner table or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, he never lost that. And, you know, exactly, yeah, you know, he, in, you know he, he would remember, you know, forget details and that kind of thing, but he never forgot who people were. You know, if you walked mm. into a room, he would know who you were and he would know the relationship that he had with you. And, you know, so I think it's, yeah, you know, I absolutely don't want to downplay how, how hard it was and, and the role that Grandma played in supporting him for, you know, particularly those last few years, but actually, his, you know, his entire life. But I think, yeah, we were fortunate that he... We still had him right till the end. He, he was still your granddad. He was still your granddad, and that's the key. He didn't lose the essence of him. Um, he's cherished here as well, you know. I mean, having that documentary and that piece of work about your granddad, you know, to have that yourself now to show generations to come, that's a fabulous thing to have, Katie, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. Um, you know, for it all to be brought together and in one place and for it to be done so mm. well. And I thought, you know, every, the whole, the storyline that they put together and the footage that they got and, you know, how true to life it was. I just thought, you know, they did it so well. Um, and yeah, we're, we're very fortunate that, that we want, that we no, can have that and keep no that. There's no doubt about it, it's beautifully put together. There is still time uh, to, to, for people to donate. Before you go, Kate, 
Uh, we just want to mention, obviously, we've been running a campaign all week called Donate for Dementia. As I say, people can still log on to donateforDementia.ie or ring uh, 01554 1680 and donate whatever you can, or just simply text MEMORY to 5300 and that will donate for your case. We're delighted to announce that we have just passed the 200,000 euro mark. So that's in just under a week. Exactly. A big bull of bust. Round of applause for everybody out there, the RDM viewers. What do you think, Kate? That's fairly special, isn't it? That is fantastic. Wow. No, that is unbelievable. You know, I mean, I saw people doing the, the jump for Jack, the star jumps. You know, I saw kids in, in classrooms, and I think you showed a clip before in, in a care home. <laughs> he would have loved that. He would have absolutely loved that. You know, I think just seeing all the kids do it, yeah, it's a fantastic achievement. And, yeah, amazing. Well, listen, thank, thank you so you. much for, for sharing your time with us this morning. And uh, he will never be forgotten here, that's for sure. Thanks, Kate. Lovely to talk to you this morning. Mind yourself. Thank you very, very much, Kate. Thank you. And yeah. a reminder, you can watch that very special documentary, Finding Jack Charlton, tonight at 9pm here on Virgin Media One. Right, we're back after this short break. See you in a minute.